Welcome to our training on understanding and reducing risk. My name is Juliana Cotto, and I'm a policy fellow for the Youth and Education Privacy at the Future of Privacy Forum. The objectives of this module are to one, identify the different benefits and risks of using student data, two, understand how to weigh those risks against the benefits to students, and three, learn best practices for minimizing risk. So teachers use student data in their classrooms all the time. And student data, when utilized and leveraged correctly, has incredibly positive impacts on teacher instruction and student learning. This quote is by Josh Parker, who was a 2012 Maryland State Teacher of the Year. Right data, rich picture, best solutions, means getting the right data to help teachers get a rich picture that then empowers them to give the best solutions. In a speech given, Mr. Parker discusses how he used student data to drive a conversation with a teacher toward better solutions for the students. Mr. Parker was able to work with the teacher looking over student data from exit tickets to see what about the lesson was not successful and then how to improve the lesson in a reteach. Now, what was crucial in this conversation is that it was easy to come to an agreement on what did not work well because that conversation was grounded in student data. And as Mr. Parker puts it, teachers have to do the most things of anybody. So being able to ground conversations and strategies in student data not only improves outcomes for students, but also improves the process of developing lessons for teachers. Leveraging student data also holds immense benefits beyond the classroom. Data analysis conducted on student data, including school discipline data, expose how zero tolerance discipline policies. Data analysis conducted on student data, including school discipline data, expose how zero tolerance discipline policies disproportionately affected minority students. One specific finding was that while black children made up 18% of preschoolers, they accounted for more than 40% of out of school suspensions. These findings prompted the US Secretary of Education and Attorney General to issue formal recommendations promoting more thoughtful and fair school discipline, which districts have been implementing with significant success. When discussing the benefits of leveraging student data, it's also important to consider how the student data is being protected and what potential risks there are to student privacy. We go through risks to student privacy in more detail in our module, Why Protect Student Data, which can be found in the resource section. But these risks include commercialization, age and appropriate content, safety, equity concerns, social harm, over surveillance, the permanent record, and loss of opportunity. Teachers and schools must continue to utilize student data. So how should you manage the risk to student privacy that comes with using student data? Risk management is a good framework and provides a three-step process to help minimize risk while maintaining those benefits. So step one is identify the potential risks. Then step two, evaluate that risk. And finally, step three, take steps to reduce the risk. So we're gonna go through the risk management process for a scenario where a teacher wishes to record their virtual classroom on a video call platform. And before diving into this example, I just wanna quickly note that we'll be discussing risk management using the risks we've identified here. Therefore, we won't be discussing any legal issues when it comes to recording virtual classrooms. This is a gray area where your school or district may have provided guidance on what they're asking teachers to do. It's understandable for teachers and school leaders to want to record these virtual classes. And the benefits include the fact that students can later access the material. So this allows for asynchronous learning and more equitable access for students who maybe are sharing devices, having Wi-Fi or internet issues or have other household responsibilities so they can't check into classes at a specified time. It also allows for students to rewatch lessons, maybe in preparation for exams or homework completion, or maybe just to solidify a concept that they're having difficulty with. Recording classes also allows for it to be used for teacher evaluations or certification programs. This of course helps to improve teacher instruction 
and in a newer remote online learning setting can help understand what tools are working for students and what tools maybe students are struggling with. So now that we've talked about the benefits, let's get into the risk management process, which is one, identifying potential risks in this scenario. So here's how we thought about the risks posed in this example, but note they're not an exclusive list. So one is safety, and there's the risk to student safety because depending on how this recording is stored or who it's shared with, someone outside of the classroom or even school could gain access to this recording. And this could lead to someone to learn where a particular student is who should not know the student's whereabouts. There's also the risk of social harm. So depending on what is happening in the class, say if there's discussions or questions and answers, students may not want wrong answers or mistakes to be recorded that could later result in bullying or pose as an embarrassment to a student. The risk of over surveillance gets to how students might feel knowing their classes are being recorded. Do they no longer feel free to participate? And then there's the permanent record. So how long are these recordings going to be stored? And will how students acted in these recordings be kept and shown to future teachers? Now, the reason why the risks we just discussed are not exclusive is because when we discuss privacy, context really matters. So for example, for this scenario, what's the class subject? What's the age group? How many students are in the class? Are student cameras on? All of these questions may have different implications for the risk. So after identifying risk, the second step to risk management is evaluating the risk. And this means weighing the risk against the benefit. So in our example, is the benefit to recording a virtual classroom high or low? And then how about the risk to recording? Is that high or low? In general, if there's a low benefit and a high risk, you probably wanna stop and not move forward. The benefit's just not worth the risk. On the opposite end, if there is high benefit and low risk, it seems that the benefit may be worth it. So in thinking about our specific example of recording a virtual classroom, there appears to be significant benefits but also potential for risks and harm. And ultimately the quadrant of where this falls in will depend on the context and how we manage that risk. So again, getting back to the fact that context really matters, we took this scenario and specified it in two different ways. So say you want to record a creative writing class where students are reading their essays on a personal challenge they've overcome. This probably falls in the quadrant of low benefit and high risk, and therefore teachers shouldn't record the class. The reason for this is there doesn't seem to be a benefit to recording students reading their essays, as it probably won't advance any learning to later rewatch or be used to study for an exam. Students might also share really private or sensitive information in their essays that they wouldn't want to be recorded or shared. Now, on the other hand, in another more specific example, maybe recording a social studies class student discussion that goes over concepts for an upcoming exam. This is probably high benefit and high risk. So high benefit because students would probably want to rewatch this recording to study and prepare for the exam. And there's a definite learning benefit to having concepts explained by peers rather than just the teacher. The risk here though, is that students are being recorded, whether just audio, but they also may have their video on. And so students might not feel as free to ask questions they might have about concepts or participate, or maybe state their views or opinions on controversial topics. In this scenario, we would definitely want to reduce the risk and maintain the high benefit. So with this, we get to the last step of risk management, and that is reduce risk. So here we have those risks laid out, safety, social harm, over surveillance, and permanent record. And these are ways to reduce those risks. So one, ensure that the video recordings are not available publicly. So store these on a learning management system provided that the school that we know is protected and only personnel with 
the school domain address can access. Secondly, be selective on what parts of a class are you recording? Is it just the lecture part where the teacher is speaking or are you recording the interactive piece? Are you recording the test prep or are you recording student data, student share outs? Or are you recording student share outs? Next is to limit how long the recording is stored. Can you delete the recording after the class has ended and the final exams have been taken? Do you wanna keep it for longer for a class that's maybe next semester that has similar concepts? Next is giving the students the option to have the camera off. Can you find other ways to measure and engage participation and attendance? Do students need to have the camera on for them to participate? This leads us to the last step of risk management, reduce the risk. So here are the risks that we previously identified, safety, social harm, over surveillance, and permanent record. And here are ways we've thought about how to reduce these risks. So first, ensure those video recordings are not available publicly. So maybe store them on a learning management system provided by the school or district. So only school or staff personnel can access them. Next is being selective on what parts of a class you're going to record. So are you going to record just the lecture and test prep? Or do you also need to record student share outs? So thinking about the interactive versus non-interactive parts of the lesson. Next is limiting how long the recording is stored. Can you delete those class recordings after the class is over and final exams have been given? Or do you maybe wanna keep it for a class next semester that has similar concepts? Next is giving students the option to have the camera off. You may want the camera on to measure participation and attendance, but think about are there other ways to measure these engagement and learning? Lastly is being transparent with students when and what will be recorded. This allows students to know that their behaviors and participation and action will be recorded and stored. So this here is a summary of the steps we went through. So again, we talked about why would teachers or school leaders want to record virtual classrooms and all of those benefits. But with those benefits and using student data, we have to go through that risk management process to make sure we're reducing risk to student privacy. So one, we identified the risk. Two, we evaluated that risk, thinking about the context and lastly, we came up with strategies to reduce that risk. To end this module, we'd like to provide this activity for you all to go through on your own. And these are two scenarios where you can, again, talk about the benefits of why a teacher would want to pursue this, but then also go through that risk management process to help protect student privacy. So the two scenarios are assigning a documentary project that requires students to film their day, and the second scenario, using an online gold star system to reward positive behavior and disincentivize negative behavior. We've provided a guide key for how we've thought about this activity in the resources that you can check out. Thank you for joining this training.